Good morning. Um, let me start off by saying that I can't overstate uh, my level of disappointment, uh, the level of disappointment of our players and our coaches with how our series unfolded. Um, losing in the first round, getting swept, that's very disappointing. But what really compounds the disappointment is that we didn't play anywhere near our best hockey during this series. And now the question is why, right? That's why you're here. <laughs> why didn't we play our best uh, when it mattered most? And the reality is it's not something that I'm gonna be able to pinpoint to any one thing. You know, a playoff series, it, it's, it's just that. It's a series of events and it's an accumulation of events. And if a few of them had unfolded differently, it might have turned the entire series. But they didn't and we lost. And I know it would make, make it a lot easier for all of us, make it easier for you to do your job, certainly make it easier for me and the coaches if we could have a clear narrative. We lost because of fill in the blank. Uh, the reality is it's a lot more complex than that. Uh, we are going to take a step back and analyze the situation. But at the end of the day, we're not gonna come up with a clear answer as to this is the one thing that cost us the series. This is why we didn't play our best come playoff time. We're gonna come up with some hypotheses. Uh, the one thing that is clear, though, from the series was that a Columbus, uh, they played better than us. They we showed more resiliency than us. They deserved to win. Uh, we did not give them the series. They took it from us, and you know we tip our hats to them. At the same time, we didn't make it hard enough on them to take the series from us. And again, that's what really adds to the disappointment here. Um, now is not the time to make excuses. Uh, it's the time to show some humility. It's the time for us to lick our wounds, roll up our sleeves, get to work, and focus on doing what we need to do so that next year we're more successful. We talk about parity a lot in this league. You'll hear uh, managers mention how strong the parity is in the league, how the coaches mention it, the players mention it, and it's not lip service. Like, the league is incredibly competitive. If we were to uh, replay the 82, regular, the 82 game regular season 100 times, maybe we end up with 15 more wins than Columbus once. Like we knew going into this series that we weren't 15 wins better than Columbus. We weren't 12 wins better than Calgary, the team with the second most wins uh, during the regular season. Maybe we have to replay the entire 82 game season a thousand times to end up with 15 more wins than them again. At the same time, if we were to replay the best of seven series we just played with them 100 times, maybe they sweep us once. What I'm trying to say is that these two teams were a lot more closely matched than our position in the standings, and maybe the outcome of this series would, would seem to indicate. We have a very good team. We have very good players and very good coaches. I'm not going to overreact and blow all the good things we have here because we had a very bad four game slump at the most inopportune time of the year. The uh, story of these players, the story of this team, the story of this you know, nucleus of players and of this coaching staff, it's not over. It's still being written. The best and most memorable chapters lie ahead. I have great faith that eventually we're gonna get the job done and we're gonna bring the cup back to Tampa with this group of players, with these coaches. I don't know when, but I know that when we do, it will be all the more sweet because of the disappointments that we will, we will have experienced along our journey to, to making that happen, including the disappointment that we're feeling right now because of the outcome of this playoff series. Before I throw it out to uh, questions, I would be remiss if I didn't thank our fans for the tremendous support again this year. It's been going on for years now, but it felt like we were, as we were having a pretty special regular season this year, the fans were having a really good season as well, and they, they were supporting us incredibly. We could feel it at the rink, we could feel it at Amelie Arena, but we could feel it away from the rink, we could feel it all across Tampa Bay. Um, and if anything, ironically, it adds to the disappointment because if, I, I really feel if we could got, have gotten the job done this spring, um, it would have been such a special, you know, vis viscerally special experience for all the Tampa Bay Lightning stakeholders, our players, our coaches, all our staff, but our fans and the entire Tampa Bay community. So 
it, it feels like a missed opportunity, and it feels that way because it is a missed opportunity. If you have questions, just raise your hand, please. Yes. Julian, you, know, you, know, you multiple times mentioned the word disappointment at least three times. Was it only three? Because it felt like uh, more. It might have been more. How much has that pushed the need to make changes this all season? Uh, the reality is there were going to be changes in the offseason anyway, just because of our cap situation. So you know, there will be some changes today. Like, it's too soon. Like, uh, the emotions are still too raw. I'm, I'm in no position to give you any indication as to what those changes will be. We're going to look at the entire situation. Uh, we're going to look at our players, our contracts, what we have coming from the minors, what's available out there, whether via trade or, or free agency. And we're going to make the best decisions we can in order to put ourselves in the best position to hopefully succeed next season. Dan here. So, um, there was a lot of talk going into the series about how you guys were saying they handled success well. They handled, when they clinched early, they handled it well. And they were 11 and 3 after clinching. But in that same time period, you gave up 43 goals in that time period. And you knew you were going to play a team going into the playoffs that was coming in piping hot, that was coming in playoff intense. Do you need it? In hindsight, did you need to evaluate how your team was playing better at that point? and find a, a, a level of intensity in that, maybe in that last week or two, even though you had already clinched it, to get into, to start playing playoff hockey early. It's always easy in hindsight, yeah. and we're gonna look at all the decisions we made over the course of the season and, and reevaluate all of them. Um, you know, this group of players, they've shown it to us so many times. They've found a way so many times. Going into this year's playoffs, I think only Pittsburgh had played or won more playoff rounds than us in the last four years. And that includes a year where we didn't even make the playoffs. These guys have stepped up time and time again, and they did throughout the regular season as well. So in hindsight, it's easy to say that. Uh, in reality, uh, I think we all expected, the players included, that we would all you know, step up our game come playoff time because that's what you do come playoff time. You step up your game. Right. Julian, when we spoke with you at the trade deadline, we mentioned that this team had answers for anything that could come its way. You clearly didn't in the opening round. Do you regret maybe not making a move to the deadline to strengthen this team for what, what happened in this year? I, I think we had the answers. We just, we just didn't perform to our potential. Greg? You mentioned Columbus was a bit more resilient than you guys. You could divide, define resiliency as effort, did you feel the guys throughout those four games gave full effort, or was there something maybe missing at times? I think there was more there, but I do think the players gave us an honest effort. They gave us what they could for whatever reason. We couldn't, couldn't muster that little extra that I know was there, that they've shown us in the past that's there. It just didn't come through during this round. Is it as simple as a speech or an adjustment? or? Again, it's not one thing. It's not any one thing. It's a lot more complex than that. Like, uh, you, you can rewatch the, the whole series and, and go through all the events and even things leading up to the series, including, uh, to, to Dan's point, how we were playing going into the playoffs and wish that you know, something had played out differently because one little thing might have made a big difference. You mentioned support for the players and obviously the coaching staff has been here for a while. How do you feel like the coaching staff handled in terms of making adjustments during the series with what Farrello and, and Columbus presented to you? Maybe different looks that you might have seen. I think we I think we did a good job in terms of having it ready. Uh, we did different things. Our execution wasn't there, and I don't have a specific answer or, or explanation as to why it wasn't there. Uh, part of the answer certainly lies with Columbus. They executed their game plan really well. Uh, at the end of the day. More often than not, it's not systems. It's not game. It's not necessarily game plans. It's it's execution, uh, and you know it's it, it falls on all of us to make sure that we execute the best. We get our players in a position where they can execute the best and put them in a situation where they can succeed. And obviously, collectively, we failed. You guys wouldn't have been 62 wins without Nikita Kucherov, probably the MVP of this league going in. But for you as a manager, he's a little disappointment in kind of the way he took himself out of. There's a position to take himself out of a, such an important game in, in game three. It's not one player. It's not yeah. one thing. I, I, we can look at Columbus. Who's been their best player in this series? It's really hard to tell. They've collectively played well. They've all contributed. When we had success in the playoffs, it was never one guy. It was a collective effort. That's how you win in the playoffs. Because again, the teams are too evenly matched. They're too good. Uh, there's just there's too much talent, good coaching, resiliency. It's not one thing, it's not one player. Uh, and he just had success in the playoffs in past years for us. Uh, 
Um, actually, most of our core players have been here where we've had success in the playoffs. Uh, we've never won the cup, but we've still found a way to win playoff rounds, multiple playoff rounds, multiple times. Uh, and Nikita was a key contributor in those series. Time for a couple here, Dan, and then John. Do you need in the off season to get a player or players who have won the cup before? Who, who you know, you have a lot of guys who played a lot of rounds. They've never won. Mm -hmm. Do you need that mentality in your room? That personality in your room? I think the mentality is there. What you might be referring to is experience. Does it really make a difference having won that X, in our case, two extra games in 2015? It's hard for me to say that it would have made a difference. I don't think in this series it played out at all. In general, we're going to look at everything again. It's 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 early right now. We just got eliminated two days ago. Uh, now would not be a good time to make rash decisions because the emotions are still too raw. I know time heals all wounds, but are you worried at all that this could linger from the offseason into the start of next year at all? It's our job to make sure it, it fuels us. We can't let it be a negative. We need to make sure, it, it, if anything, we come in hungrier again next year uh, and wiser. Hopefully we learn from this. That's all we can do now. It's, it's behind us. We lost a series. Um, so how can we turn this to our advantage so the next year we do better? Wrap it up here, Ryan, and then Eric. You signed Coach Cooper to that contract extension prior to the playoffs. What's your confidence level in him, given that this didn't end the way? My fate in Coop has not wavered at all. Uh, we've had success with Coop in the playoffs. Uh, he's won everywhere. We may not have won a cup with him, but again, going into this postseason, I think only Mike Sullivan in the last four years had, had won more run, rounds than him. Um, you know, I look at. Uh, Florida just hired Joel Quenville. Philadelphia just hired Alain Vigneault. LA just hired Todd McClellan. Uh, they're all really good coaches. They're all experienced coaches that have had success uh, at the NHL level. And all of their organizations and all of their fan bases are excited to be bringing in these coaches right now, and, and rightfully so. If you look at their past record, they've all had disappointments in the playoffs. They've been swept, or they've given up a 3-0 lead in a series and ended up losing. It doesn't take anything away from how good a coach they are. And if I hadn't re-signed Coop when I did, I'd be looking to re-sign him right now. Like, there's no point looking for the next Coop when I have the original and I like the original and I have faith in the original. Julian, I wonder if you could just speak on, on two things. Uh, Victor hadn't played in games one and game two, did not play in games three and game four. Was it something that lingered from what kept him out at the end of the regular season? And was there maybe hindsight that maybe he shouldn't have played in games one and two? Uh, he was cleared to play in games one and two, and then he wasn't cleared to play in games three and four. So that's how he played out. And, and follow up on that, there's reports that Steven Stamkos was playing with uh, significant injuries. Are you sure that? You know, at this point, a lot of players are banged up. But I'm sure on Columbus' side, they have a lot of players that are banged up. When we had success in past playoff uh, runs, our guys were banged up. It's something you you have to find a way. Again, I, I don't want to make any excuses right now uh, for, for how we performed. Like, we got swept. Like, it's time to show some humility right now. Uh, but a number of our guys are banged up, just like I'm sure on every other team in the playoffs, they have guys that are banged up right now. Last one, Diana. Um, when you say that the execution wasn't there, um, that sounds like a player thing. It's a combination thing. Like, we're, oh, yeah, that, that is. Uh, the coaches have to help the players be in a position to do the best they can, and the players have to go out and execute. And again, credit to Columbus. They also have their job is to make it hard on us to execute, and they did a really good job of making it hard on us.